this is Kevin for Pixavert.com. In this video we are going to create the false collage effect in Photoshop and the technique we're going to use is going to allow us to edit the frames and also to change the image so we're going to be creating a template that we can edit and reuse in future. The image you're working on has to be a locked background keep watching if you don't know what that is. We're going to drag in our actual background. I've opened up an image here. Use any background you like. Hit V to bring up the move tool and then drag the background to your image. Shift and release. We're going to hit Ctrl or Command G to make a group and we're going to rename that BG. That just tucks away that background image. We can switch that off. Next we're going to go to the shape tools. I'm going to use the rectangle shape tool but if you're feeling adventurous you can use one of the other shape tools. I think the rectangle is easiest to use but you could use the polygon or even the ellipse tool. Take your pick. And then make sure that you're working with a white foreground color. So I'm using here a color of 95% uh, gray which is a very bright gray which I prefer to white. I'm going to draw a frame a word of warning before we continue. Make sure you're in an awesome mood before trying out this technique. Better yet, make sure you're in a knockout mood. Watch one of my previous videos on how to create the traditional Polaroid border if you're going for that effect. We're going to go for a very simple but effective long rectangle shape here. Rename your layer border and then duplicate it by hitting Ctrl or Command J. The new layer we're going to call mask. Double click on the new layer and bring up the layer effects. Click the inner shadow, reduce the distance to zero and increase the size to whatever size works well for your document. Reduce the opacity to about 15%. The other settings can remain pretty much at their default levels. Hit OK to accept those changes. Then go down to the border, double click on the border and bring up the layer styles. We are going to add a drop shadow so click on drop shadow. I'm going to switch off global light and I'm going to choose an angle of 120 degrees. I'm going to increase the distance and the size until we get a pretty spectacular looking drop shadow. You can choose whatever settings work well for your image. Remember that the drop shadow is going to be interacting quite a lot with your image. Hit Ctrl or Command T, then holding down Alt or Option, drag out the tops and the sides. That creates a neat looking border which is visible because of the inner shadow that we created around the image mask. Then we need to combine both the mask and the border in a single group. So click on the mask and, mask and shift click on the border. Control or Command G creates a group. We can rename the group frame. Okay guys, it's safe to turn on the background. Let's go up to the frame and choose the mask. Double click on that to bring up the layer effects. Go right to the top and choose blending options. We're going to go to the fill opacity, turn that down to zero, then go to knockout and choose deep knockout. We're now going to make several copies of the frame. So control or command J to make a copy. I'm going to make about six copies. And you'll notice that they're in reverse order with frame five at the top and the original at the bottom. We don't need to change that, but it is useful to reverse it. So I'm going to select all the frames. I'm going to go to layer and I'm going to choose arrange reverse. And that sorts things out in the layers panel so that what we're seeing on the screen is the same as what we're seeing in the layers panel. It's all in the same order. Okay, let's start arranging these frames. We need to select the top or the bottom layer. Now I'm using auto select. So when I press V to bring up the move tool, Photoshop will automatically select the top layer and I can move that to the right. We can now select all the frames inside of the layers panel and that's by clicking on the top, shift clicking on the bottom one, going to the layers and choosing distribute and choosing horizontal centers. That produces this awesome mathematically precise result. I'm now going to select the central frames, click on the second frame, shift click on the second to last frame, then control or command T activates the free transform tool. Holding down shift and alt or shift and option allows me to resize the frames in proportion and we can rotate them and accept the transformation. I'm now going to select an individual frame and with auto select I'm going to move the frames around individually until we get a pretty decent result. Use your own artistic judgment to uh, arrange the frames around 
And once you've got a decent looking outcome, you're all done. And that's what I call a knockout result. Now I'm excited about the result, but the model doesn't look really happy. She hasn't changed her expression one bit. So let's change the image. Click on the image and although it's locked, we can drag it into the bin. We'll go to the file menu, choose place and bring in a new image. Resize and rearrange the image if you want. Then lock the image by going up to layer and choosing new background from layer. Then you can move around your frames to fit the new image. And that's how we use this design as a template. So I hope you found some of that useful. Thanks for watching. Till next time, take care. Bye.